Hey, you know what, humans? Up on the bench today, we have a brand new Husqvarna 562 XPG. This thing first saw wood two days ago here. You'll see those cuts momentarily. This was recently purchased by a local company who I'm not going to name for fear of them making me wear chaps when I'm cutting with their equipment. But I think if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll note the numbers on there look curiously similar to other saws I use. But I'm not explicitly saying anything. So what is this? This is Husqvarna's Pro 59.8cc saw. Puts out 4.7 horse, 4.8 according to the manual. Power head weighs 13.9 pounds, gives us a power to weight ratio of 0.338 horsepower per pound, which is pretty decent. So as I mentioned, this is a pro saw. Uh, high compression ratio, magnesium crankcase, all those goodies. The G designation on this particular saw means it has heated handles and an electronically heated carburetor which I'm sure in the wintertime are nice, but initial impressions, I'm thinking it's just more things to break, more things to fix, more complications when doing other repairs. It is an auto-tune unit, so if you're familiar with the seals, it's the equivalent of the Mtronic. And I used to not be such an opponent of them. I have three Mtronic steels, and I've had good luck with them. Recently, I was uh, kind of unable to diagnose a problem with an Mtronic climb saw, and that really kind of swayed my opinion to where I generally don't like the computers in my saws anymore. I do all the repairs on my equipment, and that's something where if I start having an issue, I can't fix it, and that kind of pisses me off. But anyway, so this is the equivalent of the Steel 362, which I actually run them side by side. But let's take a closer look. All right, starting on the side here, does have the uh, standard Husqvarna fuel and oil caps, which I actually really, really like. Does have their uh, injection system, is what they're calling it, but the centrifugal separator. So as it pulls in air, it spins and anything big gets flown out. Handle set back nice, I kind of like that. Got aluminum handles, so that's always nice, as opposed to the plastic. Do we have a purge bulb, which I don't like. I think they're pointless on these saws. Two-post chain brake, of course, inertia activated. Nice fat side plate for your boot or just to protect your hand from brush and whatnot. Unlike the M-Tronic, which is a three-way switch, the Husqvarna's are still four-way like their standard carbs. So that's your normal run. Out and up is your choke. Just pop it down for, or half choke or whatever they call it. And then just blip throttle, puts it in normal run mode and your kill down there. So throttle interlock, throttle. Do have captive nuts on this thing, so those are always nice. Side chain adjuster. And the dogs on these, the bumper spikes, bar spikes, whatever you want to call them. I'm not a huge fan of the Husqvarna's. The steels, in my opinion, tend to grab a lot better, but uh, they're not horrible. It's also an X-Torque unit. If you're not familiar, that's just a scavenging engine, so it uses fresh air to push out the exhaust. And with that, you're not pushing out air-fuel mixture with the exhaust and polluting, so it runs cleaner. I think steel calls are stratified scavenging or anything, but it's common across all two-stroke equipment these days. Exhaust, I'm sure, is restricted like all new saws are, but you know, got your spark arrestor right there for forced operation. Also has an adjustable oiler, okay, right here. It says this thing will run a 28 inch bar. I'm kind of skeptical on a 28. I'd, I'd try 24 on it without a doubt, but I don't know about 28. Also has what they're calling their rev boost technology. I don't know exactly what that entails, but it does have a very fast uh, acceleration. For a stock saw, I was pretty impressed. Also note, uh, in the manual it recommends 87 octane or above fuel, whereas the steels recommend 89 or above. But it also says if you're going to be doing a lot of high rev operation like limbing to use a higher octane, so I would just go ahead and say use 89 or above. Let's crack it open a little bit, shall we? One thing I forgot to mention, uh, a decomp right here. And also this is how you turn on the heated handles. Didn't specifically say how to turn on the heated carburetor. I'm assuming it's tied into the handle switch. And for really cold weather, under five degrees Fahrenheit, it said, uh, they make a cover so you can restrict the amount of cooling air going in. So, that's the side cover. It is magnesium, I'm assuming. Definitely not aluminum, too heavy to be aluminum. Uh, chain brake assembly, different than the steels on the side cover. Also, chain tensioner on the side cover. I actually kind of like that a little more because you don't have to loosen it all the way to get new chains on and off, whatnot. And chip deflector, looks good. Feels hefty, well well built. Outboard clutch, that sucks. Prefer onboard. I guess it really doesn't make a huge difference, but for picking on bigger bars and chains, it's easier with an inboard clutch. I don't know too much about Husqvarna bars. Assuming this is a pro, I mean, it's a pro saw. Does have a replaceable tip as well. Yep, unlike the steels, this does have a grease port so you can grease the nose. From what I've read online is you either want to grease it regularly or don't grease it at all. Doing in between causes issues. 
Right, so, as I said, outboard clutch. Actually, need to do some reading on uh, their clutches, getting them on and off. With steels, you just have that 13 millimeter generally. These, I don't know if you need a special tool. In the past, I've just taken like a center punch and popped it, or rather, popped it, because it's reverse threaded. As with uh, other Huskies, you do have these bolt-on transfer ports. And I've heard, I don't know about this specific model, but on some models, you can actually replace these, get bigger transfer ports, and get some more power out of the unit. And so, all pretty standard here. All right, so, looks like similar to the newer steels, you have cooling fins that have been put out of sync with uh, the stroke of the piston. So, the piston's going to go meh, and the cooling fins go meh. And the reason behind that, from what I've read, is for more efficient cooling and less clogging, so they pass debris better. Yeah, of course, wiring. Yay, my favorite. Felt air filter. Figured they'd have uh, the automotive style pleated, but either way, fine. Quick release air filter also. There you go. Now there is a cold weather shutter I read about. Let's find it. Hmm, stick my head right in front of the camera, it's always good. So I didn't read in the manual, maybe I missed it, that this doesn't have a cold weather shutter like uh, the non-G models, but it wouldn't surprise me. Let me reread. Okay, so I just need to read better. It's this plug right here. You knock that out, and that's your cold weather shutter. But what if you're not in cold weather anymore? doesn't appear that you can put it back in once you knock it out. So I'm definitely not gonna knock it out as we're coming into summertime. That's a little confusing, Husqvarna. I don't know, but yeah, that's what it's showing. Another thing I forgot to mention, like steels, the needle bearing can be greased through this port right here. So grease goes and then out into the needle bearing. With the side cover, looks like these are all machine screws. So they're going into magnesium, not any polymer. Here you have your air injection thingy, diverter, I'm guessing they call it, or deflector maybe. The air comes in, spins up, gets spun out. And here you have your scoop so the heavier particles and dirt go to the outside, and the clean air goes on the inside and gets pushed up into the air box. Dogs on the flywheel, and of course your brain box here, and built into your coil assembly. It's a two pole, so it doesn't have a rev limiter. I'm really liking this saw. It's solid. It's well built. AV system is pretty robust. You get a lot of play in there. And when I ran it, it was smooth. I'm not a huge fan of the decomp on saws this size, but yeah, I understand. I think that about covers it, really. I mean, it's a it's a chainsaw. Seems very first time touching wood. Already warmed up. <laughs> That acceleration's uh, pretty impressive, especially on a stock saw.
steel. See, Husqvarna should have given me one of these to play with instead of the T540, which is a piece of junk. I'd have liked Husqvarna a long time ago if they let me play with one of these, or fuck, even the 372 or the 395 that I've been using at work. Those are both freaking awesome running saws. But, you know, I'm not gonna freaking say a piece of junk's awesome just because they're letting me play with it. I mean, it's not like I work for them. Yeah. Final thoughts? Sorry if you're a steel fanboy, but I like this saw. It is pretty freaking sweet. And that's kind of following a trend I've noticed. Now that I've kind of established myself at Hanson's and have more saws issued to me, I'm currently running a 201T steel, obviously. But uh, for Huskies, I've got a 372, a 395, and this guy. The 372 has got some age to it, so I brought it home before I actually even used it, gutted it, cleaned it out, made sure everything was good to go structurally, mechanically. And it's a running saw. It's nice. And then the 395 I used, it's pretty freaking nice too. So, but yeah, this little thing is pretty awesome. Definitely a fan of it. But, you know, I did tell my boss, Jason, that I definitely need another saw. Uh, and he was like, why? And it's like, well, I mean, is, these are the ones I'm using. I need something for my ground guys to dull out in the dirt, you know. There's nothing worse than having a saw sent up in a tree and it being freaking dull or out of fuel or... Yeah, I'm sure you've been there. Jason, give me another saw. Well, that's all I got. Have a good one, humans. Where are my ground guys at?